Curry, Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Thank you. And by the way, so, so speaking of the supportive day, I think I do this in a lot of places, and this is the only place that I know of where the the aging services access point. That's what these folks are technically. Uh, there are there an ASAP ASAP aging services access points. There is one, there is an ASAP that covers every community in the Commonwealth. They have this whole area. They're the only ones that I know that support as part through through their funds uh, the um, the social day care. I don't know any. It's wonderful, and because social day care is such a crucial piece of how all of this works in terms of trying to help keep Mary at home, right? Um, it is, it's a great option, and I wanted to talk, to have Leslie talk about it. I was introduced to it, you know, like four years ago, and we, you know, I had heard of Leslie, and we just invited her, and so I learned along with the people here how that was working. It is my understanding that the program is so good that it may be growing some more, and that's very exciting, and so I wanted to have Leslie talk about what the program does now, how it works, how many people they have, and then kind of what she's hoping the possibilities are. And then I want to talk a little bit about the assisted living that isn't. Leslie. Thank you. I'm Leslie Clapp, director of Martha's Vineyard Center for Living. Um, among other things, um, we provide the supportive day program, which you've heard a little bit about. Um, the supportive day program is a social model uh, daycare type program. We've been around for over 30 years. Uh, mo most people don't know about us, and a lot of people don't find out about us until they need us. Um, but I think it's important for people to learn about us before that. Um, it's a four-day program at this point, and for many years we've been operating in two locations. So we operate in this room, basically, two days a week. Tuesday and Friday, and then we also operate the same program two days a week at the Edgartown Senior Center. Um, same staff, many of the same clients, just two different locations. Because we don't have a place uh, available to us at this point uh, where we could just be permanently five days a week. So it is a four-day program. Um, we are staffed by trained uh, individuals who are either CNAs or have been trained in dementia care. Um, we have a staff, a staff to client ratio of four to one, which is way higher than most other programs. Um, and we uh, take folks who are at risk if left alone. So some of our folks have Alzheimer's or some other kind of dementia. Uh, different stages. Uh, some of our folks have other more physical challenges, uh, <coughs> Parkinson's or uh, their seeing or their sight or their hearing is, is not good. Um, the average age of our client is probably late 80s or 90. Um, we have folks in their early to mid 90s. Um, and these are folks who are, as I think Arthur sort of mentioned, and we're a social program, so there's, these aren't folks who can't manage their activities of daily living. <clears throat> Basically, they have to be able to uh, toilet themselves and eat, uh, feed themselves. So those are the kind of the very basic minimum. Um, but we do have folks <clears throat> who um, have Alzheimer's and ha are at risk of wandering, so we have to take great care um, to be present with them at all times. Um, so that's why our staff to client ratio is so uh, important. Um, we, are, we take referrals from all kinds of uh, resources, from the senior centers, from Sandy, from elder services, and as a matter of fact, the day program is one of the, one of the programs that elder services will provide funding for. So some of our <coughs> clients are their days at the day program are paid for through elder services, through that choices or some other, one of their other um, uh, programs. So um, we've grown over the years. Um, we're constrained by space at this point. 
Um, we're not, we don't really have the space or the staffing to take more than 18 clients a day. We have in the neighborhood of 25 enrolled in the program right now. So they are not all coming every day. Um, we can't accommodate that many. Um, but um, there is the need out there and we hope to grow the program over the next couple of years. We're hoping to be able to um, find a space, get a space of our own where we could expand to a five-day program, take in more clients, and uh, provide more programs for not only the clients but the families. Um, what we've tried to develop over the last year is a caregiver support program uh, where we can provide support, education for the caregivers, and at the same time, the, uh, the loved one that they're taking care of will have a place um, at the day program to, to be and get support and uh, get some social activity, have some fun. Um, so that's something that we'd like to expand on. Uh, and if we had a space, we would be able to do that um, a little bit more easily. So that's something that we're also working on. Um, let's see. I think that um, it's really the only community program where you can um, feel comfortable leaving your loved one, your frail elder or spouse, um, and be assured that they're cared for um, every day. And they're all, not only are they just getting basic care, they're getting um, activity, they're having fun, they have friends, they are, you know, they have a great meal. Um, it truly is um, a resource that is really important. Um, somebody, if you learn about and know enough about Alzheimer's, somebody with dementia, early stage dementia, one of the most important things for them in order to combat the progress of the disease, keep people at home, is that they become engaged with other folks in activities and have social interaction. It's, if you look at studies, it's the most important thing that you can do for your loved one. So um, that's what we do. Thank you, Lisa. What she does is, I shouldn't, what they do, right, or what she does, is just terrific. Um, there, there, is, there is, as Leslie has said, nothing more important for folks, for Mary, than, as long as it's safe, to be getting out of the house. To be getting out of the house and to be socializing. One of the things I've really come to appreciate from dealing with these folks, from dealing with this issue so often is, I, I started off with this, with this in my met with a mental list of Alzheimer's symptoms, right? And they were, you forget stuff. Well, we all get that, right? You have difficulty doing, following complicated directions for the same reason, because you forget direction number three once you get past direction number two. There are a whole set of cognitive things. But then there are these others. Apathy, aggression, tremendous anxieties. There's a whole set of these other things which I have come to appreciate are not necessarily primary Alzheimer's symptoms. They are the results of people who can't remember and can't do these other tasks and get really bummed out, you know, and get depressed about it or are dealing with people who don't know how to deal with these issues and so they get embarrassed and angry and a whole bunch of other things. And as a result of that, in many cases, spouses, Frank, is trying to protect Mary. I don't want Mary to be embarrassed. I don't want Mary to be angry, apathetic. So they just keep her at home. We'll just keep her at home. We'll stop talking to all of our friends because they're all, you know, they don't understand and we'll just keep her at home. The worst possible thing that could happen to Mary, right? This, Leslie's program is like a great blessing for the, in, on the island, in my opinion, right? And I know she's kind of humble about it, right, in terms of the possibilities for growth and stuff, but I think it's just terrific. Finally, um, the piece that isn't here. Uh, in many, and I'll just mention this because, it, it, in my opinion, this needs, this needs to be here in the longer run. Um, in many places, what is happening in assisted livings today, new assisted livings that are being, that are, are being developed, built, is they will often have a memory care unit, different from the nursing home wing, right, which is mass health financed and, and it is for folks who really, really need that level of nursing care. 
Um, but to provide, this, in many ways, much of the programmatic stuff that um, Leslie is providing in the Supportive Day program, but for folks who really need to be in a safer environment that they can get at home, right? Uh, and who would benefit from having programmatic stuff all the time. And I'll just mention to, I'm just mentioning that to you because I think that's what you're going to be, I bet that's what you're going to be seeing in the future. I've been watching all the great work that's being done here by the aging, what is it? The aging task force. The task force, the healthy aging task force. And I can see a lot of, in, in, in terms of developing this kind of seamless system so, to allow you to stay here till you die, right? And that's what kind of, I think, really what it's about, right? And I could really see this as part of all of that. So, um, and I was going to talk about, the, I guess my, I was, in places where there is assisted living, the big issue with these assisted living memory unit, memory care units is they, Mass Health will not pay for them because they are not considered to be skilled nursing facilities. But there are a number of ways in which they can be paid, but I'm not going to go through those. So, bottom line is, goal of all, all of this is to sleep well at night. If this has been helpful to you and help you think about some of these issues, great. If it's not relevant to you, maybe the next program will be, but that's the goal. Uh, a quick add, um, in the long run, the goal is to get rid of, not to get rid of Alzheimer's, but really I think the, the strategy in the, among, with the Alzheimer's Association and others is to do the research to find out how you can slow the rate at which dementia occurs and when it occurs. As I've told folks, I don't care if I have dementia as long as I'm 105 when I get it, you know. So that's kind of the goal and that's what they're working on. They do it, they, they, and, and they do wonderful stuff. Um, if you want to see this presentation again or if you know somebody that wants to see it, we upload all of our presentations onto my YouTube channel in addition to my friend Tom Mayhew sending them over to, to Martha's Vineyard Cable and it's my, uh, my, my understanding that they get, a, they, get, they get good play on Martha's Vineyard Cable, so I really appreciate that. Uh, and if you want to join Frank and Mary, they actually have a team in the Alzheimer's Walk uh, in Worcester on uh, September the 28th. Thank you very much. Any questions for any of us regarding any of this? And I know there was, I wanted to start there, there was a question over here I thought from earlier on. Uh, yeah, and then I'll go over there. Yes, sir. Um, when does income become an asset? Uh, in the, there, the following there month. Slide where there's no limit to income. The following, the following month. So you got to you got to so don't spend it all down. It's an asset. That's right. Yeah. Following month it turns into an asset. Thank you. Yeah, that's a weird. But that's there's got to be some way of figuring. That's that's how they figure it. Any other questions? I yes, ma'am. I just comment. Um, mm -hmm. Just in support of your um, support day program. My dad was Lynn Hansen, and he could not have been benefited more in the last four years of his life from what he did for him. Thank you. A, co a kind a comment lady. about that program. There is something right. There are so many of those. There are so many of those. It's just a crucial piece of the eye, you know. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, and then you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, when Mary conveys her assets to her husband, is there a look back period? When Mary conveys her assets to her husband, is there a look back period? No. No. That the only exception, the, re the two exceptions to the look back, the so-called, you've all heard that concept, right? You can't give away things and then qualify for mass health because there's a five-year look back period. The two exceptions are the ones that we went through today. One, you can always convey to your spouse. Now, there are some states in which if you're in, in the nursing, if you're actually in the nursing home, but at, after you, you're in the nursing home, but before you qualify for Mass Health, you can't do that conveyance anymore. Uh, but that's not true in Massachusetts. Um, the, the, other, the other exception is this, if you, if you once again, if, you if everything would transfer it to Frank uh, if, and he, and he died the next day and left everything to Mary for Mary's benefit. There is no look back period or anything regarding those assets. They're immediately safe. Okay? 